Hey, advanced violins. I wanted to talk a little bit about the bowings that you're going to be using and that you hear me using in the audio example of this. You probably heard Mark and Maggie talk about how the bow is more or less on the string when you're playing folk music. Um, of course that's true. Pretty much anything they say is true because they're masters of this music. But you will hear that I get a little bit off the string sometimes in this version. <laughs> Like there, for example. And articulation, just like in classical music, um, is a stylistic choice. So sometimes when you're wanting just a little lift in the music, um, that's something that you can do. But you don't necessarily have to use off the string bowings there if you don't want to. Honestly, at this tempo, your bow might just come off the string anyway. Sometimes that off string sound comes from a lifting of the arm on the fourth beat because, again, groove is so felt in the arm in folk music, and so on that fourth beat, you're going to be sort of lifting up in gravity as you would if you were dancing this, and so then the bow is going to come off the string a little more. <laughs> There's just a little bit of and one feeling there, so you can play around with that if you want to. And then you'll see all these slurs over three sixteenths. That's something you see a lot in fiddle music. Sometimes fiddlers are classified as down bow players as opposed to up bow players. And what's happening sometimes with these bowings is that if a fiddler gets caught on an up bow, they're just going to do whatever they need to do to get back onto a down bow on the down beats. And so a lot of these off kilter slurs are to get you back on a down bow. So for instance, <laughs> that groove a little bit in the bow. So think of all of these bowings as just different pulsations and grooves as opposed to like a different technique. And you'll see this pickup before the start of the A section uh, that's very typical in bluegrass music. And there is a tag at the end of this tune as well which you commonly see in film music. <laughs> And then let's see, I'll talk just a little bit about um, this C part and these funny double stops that you see in measure 17. <laughs> Pure intervals are used a lot in bluegrass. I think it's just this amazing open sound that you get there. So maybe instead of worrying about intonation in that section, just think of getting that openness, which comes actually with perfect intonation, getting those overtones and intervals coming out. in it when you have a really, really good intonation on it. Thirds, double stops, and bluegrass. Make sure that third is on the lower side so you get that nice overtone in there when you're practicing that. Have fun working on this and we'll talk about more over the weekend. Enjoy guys!